happy resurrection and happy Easter to you too. Welcome to Worship and Word with Greater Evergreen Missionary Baptist Church. I am Pastor Weldon T. Smith III. Today we're turning the living room into the upper room as we culminate this resurrection worship with communion immediately following today's message. To make ready to prepare a slice of bread or crackers on your plate and pre-pour juice and water and some small glasses and after I bless the bread and the wine, have the head of the, head of the household to serve the bread and the wine to the family. It doesn't need to serve the head of the household. Don't eat, don't drink this yet. Wait and take communion together with the pastor. Because what God did for us, he did out of love. And because he loves us, even now, in this shelter in place state, let's give him praise. But no one else can love us like God can. We owe God more than just a praise. We owe God our lives. So on this Resurrection Sunday, let's lift up our voices and tell God how much we love him. I love you, Lord. I love you, Lord. I love you today. There's nobody else like you. Come on, give God praise. Let's get up and let's give God a praise. Tell him that you love him this morning. Hallelujah. Come on, Scott. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on, church. Come on, church. That's why. Come on, put those hands together and give God some praise. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. We just want to come this morning and say thank you to our Father, our Lord and Savior on this Resurrection Day. So now I'm going to ask that at this time, you just bow, our, bow your heads as we go to the Lord in prayer. Our Father, our Heavenly Father, we come to you this morning, Lord, in the name of Jesus, Father. We come to say thank you, Father. We thank you, Father, for all that you have done for us, Lord. You have been better to us than we have been to ourselves. And we just want to say thank you. And Father, on this resurrection day, we want to say thank you for your son, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, who hung, bled, and died on the cross, Lord, for the redemption of our sins, Lord. But you didn't let him stay in that grave, Father. You let him rise again, Lord, to redeem us, Father, and we just want to say thank you. Amen. Thank you, Father. Thank you for all the blessings, Lord. Father, we know that you are merciful, Father, so we, right now, Father, we ask for mercy. Forgive us, Father, for all of our sins. Forgive us of all of our evil doings. Have mercy upon us, Lord. We ask blessings upon those, Father, who are hurt, who are sick, who are homeless, Father. We ask for healing. We ask for mercy, Father. And Father, we ask blessings upon this pastor and our first lady as they stand here in the gap, Lord, to, to encourage and lift up your flock. Now, Father, as we ask for these blessings, we're going to ask that you continually bless 
each and every church door that is open in your name. Yes, and we'll be ever so grateful, ever so careful, as to give your name the honor and the glory that you truly deserve. These are the blessings that we ask in your Son and our Lord and Savior, Jesus, who is our Christ. Amen. Happy Resurrection Morning. Our scripture lesson this morning is found in Luke, the 24th chapter, the 1st through the 10th verse, and I'm reading for the, from the New King James Version. Now on the first day of the week, very early in the morning, they and certain other women with them came to the tomb bringing the spices which they had prepared. But they found the stone rolled away from the tomb. Then they went in and did not find the body of the Lord Jesus. And it happened as they were greatly perplexed about this, that behold, two men stood by them in shining garments. Then, as they were afraid and bowed their faces in the earth, they said to them, Why do you seek the living among the dead? He is not here, but is risen. Remember how he spoke to you when he was still in Galilee, saying, The Son of Man must be delivered into the hands of sinful men and be crucified, and the third day rise again. And they remembered his words. Then they returned from the tomb and told all these things to the 11 and to all the rest. It was Mary Magdalene, Joanna, Mary, the mother of James, and the other women with them who told these things to the apostles. This is the word of the Lord. Come on, let's give God some praise with the clapping of our hands. 
That's not how the story ends. In three long and three short days, he rose again. Why? Because God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. Happy Resurrection Day. Happy Easter. Happy Easter to all of you on this morning. We bring you greetings from the word of God from Luke chapter 24, verses 1 through 10. You'll find these words. Now on the first day of the week, very early in the morning, they and certain other women with them came to the tomb, bringing spices which they had prepared. But when they found the stone rolled away from the tomb, then they went in and did not find the body of the Lord Jesus. And it happened as they were greatly perplexed about this, that behold, two men stood by them in shining garments. Then as they were afraid and bowed their faces to the earth, they said to them, why do you seek the living among the dead? He is not here. He is risen. Remember how he spoke to you when he was still in Galilee, saying the Son of Man must be delivered into the hands of sinful men and be crucified, and the third day rise again? And they remembered his words. And they returned from the tomb and told all these things to the leaven and to the rest. This morning, I want to tell you what love did. Love wanted. And I want to tell you what happened. This morning, I would that you open the doors, of your mind, and meditate and contemplate as we elaborate on this subject. Death did not win. Death did not win. You see, the resurrection is the exclamation behind the proclamation that death did not win. That's the glory behind the gospel story. He arose from the dead. He died. Yes, he did. He really died. Death had him, but, but couldn't keep him. Death had him. God, death had him cold, fully human, fully divine, wounded for our transgressions, bruised for our iniquities, died on Calvary at the hands of evil men. Death was there at Calvary. Of all of the eyewitnesses, death had box seats on the first row of Golgotha's hill. He was there close enough to hear Christ talking to his father, saying, forgive them, for they know not what they do. Death heard life speak to his mother and to his earthly brother, saying, woman, behold thy son, disciple, behold thy mother. And instead of answering questions, death heard Christ asking, Eli, Eli, lama sabachthani, my God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? He made an appointment with the thief. He told his daddy, it is finished. He looked at death in the eye, turned to his father, and spoke to heaven and shouted, into thy hands I commend my spirit. Death watched as he gave up the ghost, and he died. Death watched him die. Death has claimed every creature and conquered every foe. Death, the final foe of every man. Death, the last enemy of every living creature. Death, born of sin, shaped by iniquity. Death, the great separator of families. Death, the great harvester of souls. Had Jesus the Christ dead at Calvary on Golgotha's hill. No one heretofore had ever evaded death, defeated death, or subdued death until now. And ever since Adam's sin, death and the grave had gone unchecked and unchallenged. Crime, perversions, transgressions, wrongdoings, and offense have kept death and the grave busy. Yes, Lord, running rampant, uninterrupted since the fall of man and the beginning of time. But heretofore, death knew better. Heretofore, death knew its place. But, but when death witnessed thorns being pushed uh, pushed down and divine blood being pushed up, death got a bit cocky. When, when death saw nails piercing omnipotent hands and tearing through holy feet, death started to feel himself. When blood and water gushed from the spirit from his spear, spear him from his spear, from his spear, from his spear pierced side, death watched the light of life go out in of, of, of the glove of the other side of glory. Death thought he had done something, but death hadn't done a thing. Jesus told us to his disciples, no man take my life. I freely I lay it down and freely I'll pick it up yeah, again. Yeah. Oh, yes, Lord. And the day God's son died, death celebrated its greatest victory. Death thought it had accomplished 
what sin, Satan, and the grave had not. Never before had anyone or anything in the universe brought God down. Since death didn't do it, Satan couldn't do it, and the grave wouldn't do it, let me tell you why. Sin couldn't kill him because sin was not, had, was not in him. Yes, Lord, his, his conception was immaculate. That's a sinless birth. His life was immaculate. That's a sinless life. His death was immaculate. That's a sinless death. He was and is without sin. Somebody shout a holy. Satan tempted him but couldn't touch him because he's sovereign. He told the devil, thou shalt not tempt the Lord thy God. He's righteous. Didn't you hear him tell disciples, I and the Father are one? Somebody shout righteous. Righteous. But he died. Yes, Jesus died. No matter how we put it or how we preach it, it wasn't pretty. It was painful, hurtful, harmful, hateful, and beyond our wildest imagination. The truth is he died. Death had him, but death couldn't keep him. Let me say it again. Death had never lost a patron, whether willing or unwilling. When death came calling, everybody had the answer yes. until now. Yes, Lord, yes, Lord, yes, Lord. Death had him, but not even death could keep him. And that's the beauty of the resurrection. Death did not win. Death thought he had him, but he really had death. Because the text says, the text says he took the sting out of death and victory from the grave. Death did not win. And the promise is that death will not win against those who belong to Christ. That's the beauty of the resurrection, y'all. Resurrection brings victory to every believer as death did not win against Jesus, death cannot win against those who confess him, believe him, receive him, and belong to him. And the promise is that those who abide in him will be kept by him. Let me tell you, let me tell you, ain't nothing like being kept by Jesus. Anybody in here know what it's like to be kept by Jesus? Some of you at home right now are being kept by Jesus. The hymnologist said, he said, oh, to be kept by Jesus, kept by the power of God, kept through the toils and trials. I'm trading where Jesus tried. Oh to be kept by Jesus. Lord, at thy feet I fall, for life would be nothing, nothing, no, nothing. Thou is my all and all. I tell you, in these coronavirus days, this world needs Jesus because Jesus is still the answer. At Calvary, they crucified him. The night before, they beat him all night long. He could have called 10,000 angels to his side. Record is that he never said a mumbling word. Maybe that's why. If he had opened his mouth, maybe worlds would have collided. If he had spoken, pre-existing generations could have been wiped out. But he never said a mumbling word. Yeah, he died at Calvary. He really died, but he didn't say dead. Sin could not seduce him. Satan could not tempt him. Hell could not claim him. And the grave could not hold him. Because he overcame, the promise is we shall overcome too. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. I believe the other day he told Mary, I am the resurrection and the life. He who believes in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. And whosoever believes in me, yes, Lord, shall, that shall, shall never die. Believest thou this? The text says... On that great day, on the first day of the week, it was early in the morning that they came to the tomb bringing spices which they had prepared. And they found a stone that had been rolled away. And they came in and did not find the body of the Lord Jesus. And it came to pass while they were perplexed about that two men stood in dazzling apparel. And as they were afraid, I heard the men say, Why seek ye the living amongst the dead? But he is not him. He is living. Ain't he all right? Remember how he said. And I heard the but the text says that they remembered his words. Well, my brother, I gotta leave you now. But there's one thing I want to leave you with. When you leave here today, whatever you do, remember his words. Because his words are life. His words are truth. His words are strength. His words are promise. Remember his words. 
words. Remember when in darkness he is the light. Remember when in famine he is bread. Remember when you're thirsty he is water. Remember in our doors he is shelter. Remember in trouble he's your lawyer. Remember when you're sick he's your doctor. And good God in sin he's my salvation. And because he lives I can face tomorrow. Because he lives all fear is gone. Because I know the, who holds the future and life uh, is worth uh, the living uh, just uh, because he lives. Uh, don't you know he lives? Uh, anybody out there know he lives? Uh, but he lives, uh, he lives, uh, he lives, uh, he lives today. Uh, he walks with me uh, and talks with me uh, along the narrow way. Uh, he lives, uh, he lives, uh, Christ Jesus to impart. Uh, you ask me how I know he lives. He lives within my heart. Ain't he all right? Ain't he all right? Ain't he all right? You ask me how I know he lives. He lives within my heart. Death did not win. Let us pray. Father God, let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight. O oh Lord, my strength and my redeemer. Amen. We would this morning that you prepare now for our service of communion. Communion service is the most sacred service in the life of the Christian church. We would that you would make ready for preparing the elements if you have not done so just yet. From the text that we're going to take a look, our scripture is coming from 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verses 23 through 26. It reads on this wise, For I have received of the Lord that which also I delivered unto you, that the Lord Jesus the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, Take, eat, this is my body, which is broken for you. This do in remembrance of me. After the same manner, also he took the cup, when he had supped, saying, This cup is the New Testament in my blood. This do ye, as oft as ye drink it, in remembrance of me. For as often as ye eat this bread and drink this cup, ye do show the Lord's death till it come. We would now that you join us in prayer. Father God, we ask God now your blessings upon, the, upon these elements here in this storehouse and every house today. As we turn our living rooms into the upper rooms, we invite your presence now, God in this sacred remembrance. Let these elements be changed from their carnal use to a spiritual use. Let this bread which represents your body, broken that we might build, be blessed. That Father God, we might find the strength physically to renew our walk with thee. Let this through the vine, Father God, that represents your blood, be blessed changed as it represents Father God. Not the physical, but the spiritual strength, the miracles that, we, that, that are done in the heart of a believer. We ask God that you would sanctify these elements now, God, as they represent the sacrifice you made way back on Calvary. Let's receive them, Father God, in the same spirit of which they are given in remembrance. For you say, as often as you do this, we show forth your death and suffering. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. This time I ask the head of the household to please rise and serve your family. As you take the bread and the wine, share with your family members at this time the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. Receive it that it might save your life. For he says, he says as often as you do this, you show forth my death and suffering until I come again. The body and the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, my brother, my sister, my mother, my father. Receive it today that it might bless your life. 
In Jesus' name we pray. Let us break bread together on our knees. Let us break bread together on our knees. Let us break bread together on our knees. Please serve your families. When we fall on our knees with our face to the rising sun. Oh, Lord, have mercy on me. Won't you stand with me? Rise as we receive the Lord's body and blood. In remembrance of him, let us eat together. Amen. Now, in remembrance of him, let us drink together. Amen. <laughs>